Hello everybody, welcome again to the ggrated.net live show. Here we are at episode 23. I'm your host, The Iceman, and uh, joining us all the way from Portugal is our good friend Hydra. How are you doing? Doing fine, ready for another week, and uh, ready for also plenty of coverage on everything that went on on StarCraft 2 this week. Some pretty interesting news, actually. The community is growing quite, quite fast, and uh, we also have some nice uh, results because IPL is back again, so yes. a lot of cool stuff for us yes. to cover. One of my favorites, so I'm, uh, oh, yeah. I'm really glad that we're out of all the, uh, the preliminaries and the placements and the bracketing, and now we're into the mm -hmm. uh, meat of the IPL Season 2, and uh, so far it's been a treat, so I'm looking forward to jumping into that. And um, if any of you guys were wondering, where has Sebastian been, and uh, maybe you heard him chime in just now. Sebastian is joining us. Finally, he got a chance to get off work, and uh, our trio, troublesome trio, is finally complete as we have our uh, very good friend Sebastian here with us. Sebastian, how are you doing? Tell us a little bit about what's uh, been going on in your life lately since we haven't been having you on the show for a while. Iceman, X Hydra X, it's a pleasure to be with you guys again. Uh, I feel like uh, I've been a lost musketeer without my two super dudes next to me. Uh, truth be told, uh, <laughs> since the start of June, I've been uh, printing newspapers. Yes, in this digital age, people still print newspapers, and uh, the money from uh, doing that uh, helps esports grow. Uh, also helps me buy computer gear. So that's what I've been doing when not casting a dream hack and uh, doing various interesting projects on the side uh, that has a lot to do with StarCraft 2 and after we talked about the recent events I hope to take some time and explain a bit more to you viewers what's going on in GG Vision land because a lot of stuff is happening. Awesome. Well uh, it's good to finally have you back on the show because uh, yeah we did miss you for a while and we were Hydra and I were carrying the torch along and we would uh, grab special guests as much as we could, but uh, it's good to have you on and uh, glad that we had special guests to be able to fill in, but um, nothing like the original uh, three bad boys here to uh, carry on. <laughs> Indeed, and I must also say uh, the shows that uh, you, uh, both of you have uh, conducted uh, in my absence have been absolutely awesome and the guests you got on like Spanishiva and many others, stellar stuff guys, very well done. Yes, and uh, coming up after the uh, MLG Anaheim, I believe we're going to have uh, no shortage of more special guests and uh, probably even some more previously uh, before MLG Anaheim. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to keep bringing the special guests and uh, there's no stop in sight. So this is really good news and uh, we're glad that everybody keeps tuning in and uh, posting positive feedback and uh, the few people who do say, come on, where's the show every week? We're really happy for your guys' uh, support. And uh, for those yeah. people who are less vocal, we keep doing it for you guys as well. We know you're sitting in the background uh, licking your chops every week to get the podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually, uh, a couple of my friends said uh, they hadn't heard about this show before, and I showed it to them, and they're they're always playing StarCraft 2, and now they... Uh, they watch the show at work or they uh, listen to it uh, to and from cool. work. So I, I know people cool. people do enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. But, so um, um, you guys where are you going to start? Uh, let's, do you want to start with the uh, IPL Season 2? Well, since... IPL is probably the, the longest one, the biggest one. If you want to start there, yeah, uh, sure, let's okay, go for it. Let's, let's start with GSTL then. Because, okay. Uh, we usually do start with the Korean news, and so mm -hmm. might as well keep that tradition going. And uh, since we have a lot to talk about about IPL season two, we'll talk about the GSTL mm -hmm. first. So uh, <laughs> Hydra, I guess I'll yep. uh, pass the mic over to you, and you can start uh, rapping about that. And um, I'll get the vod rolling here for us. Well, I'm um, not sure where to start because. Um, uh, early last week, the biggest news were, oh my God, Slayer's team has a girl there. What is this? Blasphemy, heresy, there's a, a girl pro gamer on Slayer's team, and I guess you're going to be able to uh, take a look at her there on the, on the VOD. But um, she didn't play any game. Um, apparently, she's part of kind of a PR stunt by Slayer's. Um, uh, the um, Slayer's boxer's fiancé made a comment saying that, well, she's a gamer, but she's always part of... Uh, a certain image that Slayers want to have, a bit of a PR coup, and hey, it works, respect to them, it's a good option. Um, apparently the girl, uh, actually she's trying to be a pro gamer. Um, last time I checked from all the comments that were on TL, uh, I think she's Diamond, Diamond League on in Korea, 
not bad, um, especially compared with me on my Styrofoam League. But um, <laughs> she's um, she's <laughs> she's a uh, Styrofoam uh, League man. We all love it. Yeah, but. But listen, I mean, even if she's diamond and she's not uh, on the same level as all the players from Slayers, I mean, she has a big team there. Mm -hmm. If she is committed and if and if this if this is more than a PR stunt, if she's actually willing to uh, evolve on the game, she has some huge practice partners there. So uh, we might be seeing more of that. But um, on on to the results, and I'm going to let you guys just evaluate by yourselves and. Say whatever you want, might be easier like that. And I'm just going to go for the results. Not much have been played because uh, we covered a lot of GSTL on the previous, previous um, episode of GG Rated. We covered like almost two weeks of results. So, uh, yeah, we covered a today lot it's of matches. Yeah, it's going to be fairly short, but I'm just going to go quick over the results and then I'll pass on to you guys. You guys can share your opinion about um, the novelty on the players from Slayers that everyone was talking about. I guess it's part of being a nerd. Um, but uh, yeah, the, well, the couple of matches that went on was FX Open against Team Foyu, with uh, Team Foyu winning a clear 4-1. FX Open struggling a lot. I watched these games; mm, wasn't very good. We had the uh, Gumiho Foyu just uh, entering, sitting down on that booth, and start destroying FX Open players. Slog, Moonen, and the Korean Oz. The three of them got killed, and then when he was close to get an all kill, QXC just saved the day and took a win over Gumiho. But then, um, hey, that's one, one of the thing though. Uh, QXC, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good to see him get a win over there. So, yeah, and, one, and, one piece of positive news that we can extract from that, even though uh, FXO has been on the uh, receiving end of the ownage, so yeah, I, I mean, it's. They're taking a couple of wins occasionally, it's not bad. Keep in mind that when FX Open uh, sat down for the G GSTL to play the first game, the Koreans were going on that uh, they would be rolled over 4-0 every day. And that didn't happen. They actually showed that they um, had some players. They obviously need to evolve and progress. But as a team, they have potential. And uh, on this specific uh, matchup here, QXC was able to defeat Gomiho for you. But uh, then one of the team managers, one of the coaches, Choya for you, the guy that loves singing inside the booth, mm. just sat down and destroyed QXC. Well, didn't destroy, but took a clear win over QXC, mm -hmm. and uh, the result ended up being 4-1. Then you had, as well, Team Xenex facing against Team Startail. With uh, Startail winning 4-3, close match, close I would like... Yeah, yeah, I would recommend this um, this series to anyone that has the the ticket to watch all of this, or if you can watch it on other places uh, that are not GOMTV, it's your problem, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> but um, just uh, take a look at it, because it was an interesting series. With... Um, one of the Terrans that it's kind of on the rise at the moment, Xenex Bian, is getting really solid. He defeated Sound and Curious on the first two games, and you all of, all of a sudden you had Xenex leading 2-0 over Startail. And then Bian got defeated by Ace, and then Xenex Line, one of my favorite new Zerg players, defeated Startail Ace. But then, well, Startail just asked Bomber to sit down on that booth, and Bomber took three uh, clear wins over the, his opponents, Line, Puzzle, and Coca. Keep in mind that we're talking here about three very solid players from Team Xenex, and Bomber was able to just crush all of them mm -hmm. to a final win of 4-3. So basically, he turned the table after Xenex was leading. Congrats to Team Startail, obviously. It was an interesting win. But um, now I'd like to hear a bit about what you guys think about uh, this new acquisition by Slayer's team and uh, the results. What do you guys think? Uh, Sebastian, I'll pass it to you first since uh, you've been uh, away from the mic for so long. So take it. Uh, go ahead. Thank you, Iceman. Indeed, um, I have longed for the mic, and also I like the sound of my own voice, but I try to add something of value when I do unleash <laughs> it. Uh, the, the most interesting piece of news is, of course, this new acquisition, uh, the fact that some nerds are better than others certain weeks. That's all good and well, but this is actually, it could be groundbreaking, because um, there's now a female on the team, and uh, you before in StarCraft 2 and in the Korean setting, it should be said. It should be said in Europe and the United States, there is another gender dynamic in esports. It is more equal, more centered around the sport. I'm saying more, uh, which is not the same as completely. There is still this hype thing going on. As soon as you put a female into this male-dominated uh, uh, culture and the arena of esports, it tends to focus much more on the male viewer than on the sport. But in Korea, that has always been the case, utterly so. Uh, um, many people will remember Toss Girl, who was a complete novelty yeah, item. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, she was not very good at the game. She competed in the original GSL and several 
uh, pro leagues uh, in uh, original brood war and sure she was pretty good but um, she never lived in the house she never she was never there to win she was there to uh, be sexy in a miniskirt and damn she was but it wasn't good for the sport I personally uh, want esports to be the gender neutral competitive activity it can be because in many regular sports there is a tangible difference between uh, male and female anatomy at the highest level. Uh, you can be stronger as a male uh, if you practice uh, the same, for example, if you train the same. In esports, that does not matter. Uh, mm -hmm. Esports can be the vehicle for um, progressive gender relations, so to speak. And I think that's a personally that's personally a very good thing in general. And it would be a very good thing for esports in particular. It would make it so much more inclusive. And this, I, I don't know. It looks quite toss girl to me, the Slayer's acquisition. Uh, mm -hmm. Results will have to determine that. If she practice uh, hard enough, she will be as good as anyone on that team, depending on her innate talent. Um, but I don't want to see another toss girl happening, because that will uh, prohibit women from joining the esports movement. And we want everyone to be involved with this regardless of gender and age and uh, I there's a big question mark on this I hope the Slayers boxer is aware because uh, he's the one calling the shots about these things he's all very aware about image and about marketing but I hope he sees the bigger picture and has uh, acquired uh, this new talent because she's actually good at Starcraft and not just equipped with nice legs mm -hmm. over to you guys man I'm, so, I'm sorry, uh, before Iceman, before you go on, let me just add a comment, Sebastian. Keep in mind that from what I read on the, um, I think that it was uh, the fiancé from Boxer that made a post on, uh, post on Twitter, made a tweet saying that um, she is a gamer, she is a pro gamer and she's part of the team, but she's also part of a PR maneuver, you know, like to provide a bit of visibility and also to show a bit of difference compared with other Korean pro gaming teams and obviously try to maybe attract a different, a different line of um, fans into the team. So um, I guess they're aware of the fact that they want more of her than uh, just being a, a pro gamer. Well, just being it was, was what, what she was supposed to be. But um, I think they're, they're ahead of that. They want to promote the team in different ways. They want to give it a different visibility and hence the girl. I'm sorry, Heisman, go for it. Oh, no, it's all right. Um, I think you're both a little bit right. Um, uh, definitely Slayers probably made this acquisition not in a uh, move to bolster their forces in terms of uh, uh, just how fearsome of competitors they are because, uh, as you were saying, she's a Diamond League player right now and... Uh, mm -hmm. We still have, I mean, we haven't seen too much from her, and um, it's yet to be determined what uh, her actual level of play is and just how uh, good of a player she is. But um, Slayer's boxer, is uh, he's, he's no dummy. And um, mm -hmm. putting a female on a team like this is definitely going to turn heads and going to get people talking, uh, just like we here are discussing this right now. And yeah. um, for a PR move, I think this is something that's uh, really good for Slayer's team. I mean, this is obviously going to get more people attracted into this, and there is uh, there are actually probably quite a few uh, gamer girls out there that are going to see this that might, you know, rally behind this or say, hey, look, uh, new girl on Slayer's team, you know, we can we can show what we're worth, too. We can do this. I know we uh, had uh, yeah. Miss Suna on the show a couple weeks ago, and she is a uh, uh, caster for the uh, Women's Cup uh, League. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some very good uh, female players in that league as well. So, I mean, it's not that they're only showpieces, you know, this girl has there for the nice legs and stuff. But uh, as for right now, I do suspect this is more of a PR maneuver than rather uh, uh, buffing the ranks of Slayer's team. Because, uh, I mean, right now we have Slayer's MMA, who is hot. Um, Boxer, of course. Gonzi is there. I mean, there's all kinds of great players there. And uh, this... To me, it smells more like a PR move at the current moment, but uh, we have to see just how she plays, and uh, I mean, I'm going to reserve complete full judgment till after that, but for right now, it seems a bit more of a PR deploy, and uh, Slayer's um, fiancé has uh, alluded to that a bit on Twitter, so yeah, I, I don't see anything wrong with that, though. I think it's, uh, no, it's no, a nice no, move. No. No, I mean, it's it fine. is, and but I'm... I think that sexism in the longer run, uh, as in gearing more towards the already existing male viewer base, could be detrimental long term. I hope that she, she can be 
both equipped with nice legs and kick ass at StarCraft 2, because that would truly open doors. Yeah, well, I'm uh, I'm sure she's uh, got some skill in the game, and with the players that she has oh, in the yeah, player's yeah. house, I'm... If she, as Hydra said, put the time in and the work in, she can uh, take her gameplay to the next level. And uh, this might just be like, you know, a bait, uh, piece of bait that they're going to try to reel in more girls into the StarCraft scene. You never know because, as I said before, they might, you know, rally behind this and see, okay, you know, if, if she can make it there and uh, if they think that they're better players or if they show that they're better players, other women might uh, show up and it's going to be a more diversified um, uh neutral sex uh, league, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's yeah. hope that. So, well, uh, uh, I, we won't know till we wait. I mean, StarCraft is still relatively new in the lifespan compared to uh, the lifespan Brood War had and still has. Um, so, I mean, the stuff like this is still, you know, very new. Yeah. Very. Yeah. It's all good. All good. What yeah. about the results? What do you guys think about the results? Uh, you want me to go first, Sebastian? You do that. All right. Uh, then talk a little bit about the uh, FOU and um, FXO bit. Uh, Hydra, should we mention the fact that about the uh, rumor that's going around about FXO is uh, acquiring um, a well, Korean um, team? Yeah, I mean, it's just um, just a post on uh, TL. Obviously, he has a reason behind it. Apparently, there's going to be an FXO Korea. They basically acquired or fused or merged uh, uh, with Team uh, FOU. Mm -hmm. I think it's a huge acquisition, as you might imagine. Respect for FXO, I think it's a brilliant move. Uh, also a sign that they want to solidify their position in Korea, which is good. Yeah. But uh, I do see that here on the viewers who have FXO frequency. Maybe you could tell us something about it. I yeah. mean, we can even drag him on Skype if he wants to talk about it, but it's his option. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to keep sharing my... Go ahead, go ahead, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, as Hydra was saying, yeah, we were just talking a little bit about the show, about the... Uh, the post on TL about the uh, acquisition um, or merger of uh, FXO and uh, Team FOU. And, uh, I mean, FXO has been, they have been playing, but the uh, performance ha has been a bit uh, lackluster, maybe. Um, they have been putting up fights, and uh, they have been getting, you know, sporadic wins here and there. Uh, QXC got the win here. I believe Chef got the uh, win a week or a couple weeks back. He did all right. And, um... But for right now, I mean, they're they're getting beat pretty convincingly. Every every set or every uh, series we're seeing is you know like four one, uh, four all, something like that. But uh, with this news and the merger or acquisition, I think it shows that they're you know dedicated to staying in Korea if they're going to start forming this you know uh, yeah. Yeah. Korean house there and they're going to form their league and base or not league but their team and they're going to base it around you know the prospect of being in Korea and staying there for the long haul, which is something I, I really respect because that's a huge yep. investment. And uh, even if they've been getting, you know, beat uh, relatively bad like this, it shows that, you know, hey, they're dedicated, they're going to stay there. And um, I'm, I'm really happy about that. That's really positive for, more, mm -hmm. for me, even mm -hmm. though that, uh, you know, we've seen them been on the receiving end of, uh, you know, some pretty one-sided victories. But uh, I'll be really interested to see how that develops, and uh, I'm going to be following along because it's nice to support a uh, foreigner in Korea, and let alone a full foreign team. But now they're going to be mixing with the Koreans, so it's uh, who knows what kind of mix-ups they're going to have. But uh, yeah. it's enough for me, Sebastian. I'll pass it to you. Uh, this is uh, very interesting, and viewers of GG Rated will know how much I love to talk about how esports and stock of two in particular can be uh, you know a, a vehicle of globalization uh, using very epic phrases uh, how um, things are coming together nowadays especially from people with a brood war background will remember how segregated things were how backward they were and now all of a sudden uh, we see mergers happening uh, cross cultural cross language boundaries the players can't speak but apparently uh, the uh, organizations can speak with each other uh, it is very promising and I'm sure uh, we will remember this age in five years from now as the chaotic beginning um, I don't know uh, we could probably find some uh, parallel in uh, Roman history about uh, this era in Starcraft 2 but nowadays it just seems like uh, so much is happening all over the world, yet it's coming together. It's, um, 
it, it is very enticing, and I do hope that uh, FX Open, uh, which I was recently told by Hydra, is indeed sponsored by uh, uh, serious money, so to speak. Uh, indeed, mm -hmm. uh, they they have the ability, uh, but uh, or rather they they have the money. But interestingly, they also have the ability to connect with uh, Korean organizations, uh, and they all can see the mutual benefit of working together. Apparently, FX Open wants to stay in Korea. One way of doing that is to uh, absorb Koreans. Uh, that is a very effective way. No one has done that before. It is entirely new. Uh, if it works, we'll have to see. I hope that management uh, will not meddle too much uh, because that could really cause a rift here, but rather that they uh, allow the current people who are in charge and the players uh, to work it out between themselves, but that they just support them in the right way. Uh, again, this is a global movement, and this is another telltale sign of that, and it is very exciting. I see so many problems ahead, but they are logistical problems. Maybe that can be worked out. If so, StarCraft 2 is getting exciting, and not just inside the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One other point I'd like to make real quick before I uh, give it back to Hydra here to make his comments. Um, with the mixing of these two teams, I it's going to be really awesome because they're going to have the... FXO is going to have the uh, insight now and the direct contact with uh, the Korean players, I, I'm going to make the similarity, I guess, a little bit between how Huck is, you know, in the OGS house, and we've just seen how his play has grown by leaps and bounds. I mean, I don't think anyone can deny his, uh, just, his amazing um, growth and expansion and maturity in his play and uh, just even his APM and his mechanics and his decision-making, everything has just uh, grown really, really uh, in leaps and bounds. And, um, with uh, you know, Q with uh, excuse me, with um, FXO merging with uh, Foyu here, possibly, I think that uh, these two groups working together, it's going to be really nice if they can teach each other to new different play styles. Because of course, the uh, everybody knows that Korean uh, mindset or play style in StarCraft Two is different from um, other regions. And uh, if they can really get solid practice in there, I think the FXO players can grow and uh, expand their play and they can possibly show uh, the Korean players something new as well so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really just excited to see the uh, growth and expansion there and especially someone like uh, Choya Foyu such a young guy and uh, he's already one of the you know prominent figures in the scene who's a powerhouse uh, I can only imagine what kind of player he's gonna you know grow and turn into be now yeah, I was just thoughts? um I w no, I was just wondering, but I'm going to leave this just in the air, food for thought. You guys can think about it. But um, now that FXO has the a Korean division with all of the, the FOU team, which is a very solid team, by the way, imagine that instead of bringing like their whole team like they did now, they just add a couple of players to the Korean team for a certain GSL. Imagine, for example, we all know that Chef already said that he doesn't want to get back to Korea. He had the experience, he loved it, but he wants to get back to what he was doing before and play on the foreign scene. But um, imagine that you have the chance of uh, having like QXE or another um, solid player from Team FXO just added up to the mix. Occasionally, they just go there and stay for two, three months, learn with the Koreans, evolve their game, and then maybe they have a chance of showing up on one of the GSLs, on the GSTL, or on Coda, who knows. Might be an interesting uh, way of approaching the problem, you know, because at mm -hmm. the moment, there's two teams, and they have their old team, the whole team there, and now the FXO Korea. So I think that eventually you're going to have this team that just moved there to the GOM TV house, moving back to their bases, to, to their headquarters. You're going to have the FXO Korea there, and maybe you're going to have a couple of players showing up to add up to that Korean team occasionally. And um, I was hoping to see more of QXE there, and not as a caster, by the way. I think he should just sit down and dedicate his time to the game. Though, on one of the last interviews I read with him, he was saying something about he still needs to get college done. So education first, and um, it's still not finished, so we might have to wait a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it might be... Uh... I mean, Sheth, obviously, he made the comments that he's, you know, wanting to go return. Uh, mm -hmm. That might actually be a better idea to, uh, instead of spreading the team thin and um, it's going to be a bit diluted uh, in terms of um, just how many players they have in the team, uh, might be a better idea, as you said, Hydra, to have, you know, specific players that they hand select. Uh, oh, QXC is also one of the players I was thinking of, possibly uh, Moonglade or Moonin, a couple of other players who are very good. We, we know that they're... Uh, 
uh, very good players and have lots of potential. And under the uh, the right circumstances and training, they could explode into a, a huge powerhouse player. So I mean, you you never know. It's mm -hmm. it's right now. It's really you know new news. So we're gonna have to see just how things wait turn and out. see. Yeah, exactly. wait and see. Let's move on. Yep. Uh, you uh, want to discuss the IC Cup Korean Weekly real quick here? Yeah, I'm gonna just make a brief comment about it. I added yeah, it to the news because. Uh, that. Yeah, I just, uh, just wanted to mention this because I know people miss this kind of events. Um, there's so many events going on that, um, I don't know, minor ones, if I can call it minor, because in my opinion, I think it's going to be a really awesome event. But uh, anything besides like MLG and ASL, IPL and uh, GSL, people just pass a bit on the site for some reason. NTSL opens as well now. But uh, this is one that you shouldn't miss, and um, this is going to be having VODs on HD on the Justin TV's channel from IC Cup and it's basically the finals from the IC Cup Nation Voice Korean Weekly which is a, um, an event that has been played the last couple of weeks, no, not, not couple, at least four weeks if I'm not mistaken and they've been duking it out, battling with a lot of the main references playing in Korea there's a lot of well-known names as you can see on the list there on the, um, on the stream I mean if you take a look at those groups, and they're going to start playing today, it's today, tomorrow, and then the mm -hmm. finals will be on the 20th, if I'm not mistaken, always at the same time. Yep, the meaning finals that, will be uh, Wednesday, July 20. Meaning that if it, this is the kind of tournament that you like, and what I mean by this is, do you like the Korean pros? That, is that the scene that you enjoy the most? Do not miss this. I mean, look at these groups. You're going to have let's, let's Puma. Let's go over the groups because we're going to have audio for it. Go. who might not see it. Um, Go for it. Group A, we have TSL Alive, Xenex Life, Xenex Core, and uh, Liquid Huck. Group B, yep. we have TSL Puma, the uh, recent winner of the NASL Season 1. Uh, mm -hmm. Xenex Byun, NS, HS, Sage, Startail Curious. Then we have Group C following Xenex, Tond... Ten, Tadongho, Tadongho. Yeah. Tongue Twister there. Xenex Puzzle, <laughs> Classic <laughs> Prime. We, and Xenex Naya. Group yeah. D, we have TSL, JYP, NSHS, Tassadar, IM, Yonghua, and NSHS, San. So, uh, mm -hmm. nice mix-up we have there. And um, as, Korea, or as uh, Hydra said, if you're interested in the uh, Korean scene or Korean pros, this is something that you'll definitely not want to pass over. But uh, yeah. I know yeah, it's your favorite question to ask, Hydra. What do you think is the group of death here? Yeah, yeah but I want to discuss this. Yeah, I want that, but I, I want to pass it to Sebastian as well for him to comment on the players. What I would just like to uh, enforce again is that um, this is all HD, good quality, going to have free VODs, meaning that you're going to have some really cool tournament here with no one asking you for tickets and HD passes and crap like that. Just mm -hmm. try to take a look at it. You might like it. And... Uh, from what you can see on the player list, it's a very solid group. Sebastian, what do you think about these groups? Well, first of all, I must say that I am very guilty to missing these kind of smaller, yet epically huge, considering mm -hmm. the players, tournaments. And uh, considering that I'm myself a caster trying to make it in by doing, obviously, uh, niched content, um, it's a sort of a vicious circle. So I do want to... Uh, uh, strike a blow for this and uh, trying to promote it because uh, you told me about this earlier Hydra and uh, indeed uh, this is where you see the sort of the, the new things the stuff that uh, are less standard uh, and where people uh, and players uh, do crazier stuff because they have to because they, they might not be as good or they really want to be we have mm -hmm. uh, like uh, uh, TSL Alive in the same group as Liquid Huck uh, Huck is a beast and uh, the the funny thing is that you will see these players, uh, the big names, TSL Puma, man, he, he won the NASL, um, and several others. You will see them at the big events, and that's all good and yeah. well, in GSL, the NASL, the MLG, and at, at the DreamHack. But um, I personally, I have a few favorites, uh, a handful, and they, they, they change over time, of players that I absolutely adore. And I don't have the time to watch all the StarCraft I want, so I tend to hone in on certain players. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to have a context in between, uh, Huck is one of them. But uh, sort of the underdog is always more interesting than the ruling champion to me. And here you can find uh, 
s certain players that uh, used to be good or that you believe will be really good. And here you'll see them un unleashing the stuff that you'll see in a month or three months later on. And uh, this is what makes the, the smaller events so much more interesting if you have a special interest at the very least. Uh, that's how you can warrant it. Uh, seeing TSL Alive versus Liquid Huck, that would personally be a thrill to me. Anything with Puma uh, versus ST Curious, who's a glorious Zerg player. And uh, as you said, Bjorn, uh, he's up yeah. on the rise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As well as many others. I'm less um, familiar with uh, many of the other names, I must admit. But uh, this is th the kind of tournament that you tune into and you get surprised by the awesomeness. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I recommend it and I plan to watch it. Well, um, it starts today, so people just sit down and enjoy it. Or if you don't have the time, never mind, don't worry. They're going to leave the VODs for free. You can watch it later on if you feel like it. Um, what I would like to mention is that you have some big solid names here and also some stars on the rise. People have been talking about that Protoss on Group B and SHS Sage. Sage did a huge show, put up a huge show on the Team League on the GSTL. Mm -hmm. And he's still no one. He's still trying to clinch a spot um, to glory and fame on the Korean pro scene, try to get that Kode spot and then a Kode spot. Um, and you have other players. I mean, Puzzle's been doing quite well. He was now on the finals of Kode that were uh, on today. Group A has, I mean, Liquid Huck, TSL Alive. Xenex Bian is a solid player as well. You have some very good matchups here, and uh, I think this is going to end up having a really nice bracket for the final day, which is going to be on the 20th. Uh, group of Death for me, and just going fast through it, it's Group B, yeah, okay? Obviously. For me. Puma, Bian, Sage, and Curious is a very good group. Though Group A uh -huh. seems quite solid as well. And I want to see a live against Liquid Huck, no doubt about it. Yes, mm -hmm. Sebastian, you're absolutely right about that. But yeah, the groups are quite interesting, and I'm looking forward to this. Sebastian, it's high profile. For you. I mean, uh, it has to be Group B. Yeah. Uh, Li Liquid Huck is the very best player in Group A. Uh, not saying the others are bad, he's the best one. Puma, Curious, Bjorn, I don't know too much about Sage, I must admit. Those are three very fearsome. Puma would have to be considered a favorite, but uh, a recent favorite. Uh, uh -huh. Curious, I remember him from what seems like a long time ago, last year. Um, that's the group of that for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, sounding like a carbon copy here, but uh, Group B is definitely the uh, group of death here. I mean, Puma off the recent NASL victory, uh, beating MC no less. Um, then Xenex Beyond is just hot Terran player right now, uh, seemingly just can't be stopped. Uh, mm -hmm. Sage, who has also been proving to be uh, somewhat of a dark horse in the uh, team league, I mean, what somewhat of a no-name, and uh, I mean, the guy's been just ravaging in the team league. And then, of course, Startail Curious, as you were saying, Sebastian, you know, one of the well well-remembered Zerg players from Startail, who's a yeah. very strong Zerg player. But uh, something I just want to point out about Group D, which might be might have somewhat of a buzzkill for people. Um, <laughs> PvP. <laughs> all PvP here. Uh, we have four Protoss players in Group D, so uh, you guys are going to see a lot of the uh, Protoss versus Protoss mix-up. So um, get prepared for that in Group D. So uh, advancing from Group D, 100% guarantee we're going to see a Protoss coming out of there. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> that's a safe but, bet. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I just put the brackets up on screen for anybody who is watching and is curious how the uh, brackets are going to go. In the uh, first round, we're going to have the winner of Group A versus the second in Group D. Um, those two will play and then advance into the semifinals. We'll also have the winner of Group C play against the uh, second in Group B. Uh, winner of that will advance. Um, in the semi to the semifinals, uh, winner of yeah. Group B will face second in Group C. Winner of that will go into the semifinals, and the winner of Group D versus the second in Group A will advance to the semifinals. So, uh, so um, meaning that uh, the first two place uh, placed players on each group mm -hmm. will qualify for the finals, playing on the twentieth, and hopefully you're going to have some epic battles here. I'm not going to repeat it more. I'm, I know I'm going to sit down and watch this because it's free and it's going to be HD yeah. and no one is going to be nagging me ab about paying uh, HD passes and so on. So, yeah, yeah you, awesome. You can't get better than free HD and then HD videos uh, on demand. Hey, so. but, but I know another big tournament that has free HD and VODs and doesn't ask me for uh, passes as well. You know oh. which one is it? Who, who is it? Let us know. Yeah. Uh, 
It's exploding now again. Finally, they're starting the season two, and boy, it, they're getting bigger and bigger. Could it be that you're talking about the uh, IGN Pro League Hydra? Oh yeah, season two. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. Nice. Finally, we're here. <laughs> All right, well, nice I'm gonna get the way, Hydra. I'm gonna get the VOD rolling with that uh, <laughs> that uh, softball. We call that a leading question. Uh, <laughs> Hydra do? led me right into the subject. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> thanks, man. You made my job easy here. I'm going to get the VOD rolling. And uh, I know we yeah. have just ranted and raved about how amazing Season 1 was. Guys, have you been uh, able to see any of the uh, matches from Season 2? I know, uh, Sebastian, that you said that you tuned in and you were able to watch the uh, matches. Give us uh, your, your preliminary thoughts here so far as we've seen some amazing matches, in my opinion. And uh, Season 2 seems to be carrying on with the tradition of Season 1 and just... Uh, going further with it, but uh, I'll let you talk first. Go ahead, Sebastian. Uh, well, Iceman, everything you say is right. I love the IPL, and I got into it late. I missed most of the first season because, well, life and StarCraft, there's lots of both, and uh, here's this new league. Now I can't invest in it, but you guys convinced me to check it out, and I just got to watch the, the concluding uh, uh, matches of it, really. Uh, but I was surprised, pleasantly so. They've uh, invested heavily in making a really good production. And uh, Season 2 is uh, not letting anyone down. They got uh, Pain User, HD StarCraft, back in form, I must say. And I loved HD stuff back in the day. And here, here he's back again. And uh, Cat's Pyjamas, I believe he's called. Other casters as well. It's good stuff. And uh, they got the very best gamers as well. Uh, here we see Idra versus Druby clashing. And I actually watched uh, D these games earlier today just as I woke up at one o'clock after having printed newspapers for a whole week and here we see uh, Idris Mutalisks just being murdered because he missed Marco oh. them after oh. he GG or rather not GG um, <laughs> you know, and just as, left. Uh, yeah that was beautiful <laughs> Uh, but I also must uh, add to uh, the IPL that uh, for me personally, uh, the way I cast, the way I like to watch StarCraft is when there's overall high production value, when, when there's you know love in the whole air. And here we see the beautiful Mutalisk Massacre again, which uh, made uh, Idra true to form, not GG, and just leave the game, though he uh, concluded <laughs> to win that series. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love the way that the, how the IPL has nice overlays, how, how it shows that they made an effort, how they have player cards with little info sections, how they have an intro and an outro, simple stuff like that. I know many hardcore Purit Puritans say, whatever, uh, I'm all about the game because I believe I have the capacity to be a pro gamer and I just want to see what they do and I want the dry uh, commentary and analysis. Sure, that's fine, but I want the fluff, man. I, I want the, the, the lip gloss. <laughs> the fluff uh, and the eye candy. The, the eye the candy. The frosting on that the outside. Exactly, because there's so much epic StarCraft around, and I want mine in a nice envelope with, uh, uh, you know, this nice little sequence on it and uh, with a little bow that you have to untie, <laughs> so to speak. And I love the way that the IPL is pleasing to the eye and uh, packed with ownage. It makes them stand out in the crowd. And someone mentioned it was free, right? Uh, All yes. free. Free? Yeah. Well, HD. Um, I mean... Those are the two biggest things that has gone for it, I would say. And then uh, number three, top. number three for me, that just puts it over the top uh, even further than season one. The cast of players is just phenomenal now. Uh, Hydra, I remember that one of your comments about the season one was, okay, um, this is great so far. They're doing amazing things, but you want to see more diversity. You want to see uh, European players. You want to see you know, all sorts of regionality included, not just North America and some lesser known yeah. players. And then uh, IGN listened to what uh, you had to say and they said, hey, we're going we're gonna to carry make on with what bigger. we're doing here and we're going to make it even bigger. And uh, they were just uh, making sure they had everything working straight, which I think was the uh, proper way to take it. And it was just phenomenal season one and season two is already starting to shape up to be even better in my opinion. Well, yeah. what do you think? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just taking a look now at the stream. There's Destiny playing against Sock. Just a shout out to Destiny. Um, and by the way, I'm not a fanboy because uh, I don't even enjoy watching his stream that much. But uh, respect the guys evolving and they put in a nice fight against Sokka. Yeah. It was uh, interesting to watch some long epic games. 
pretty cool to watch. I think Destiny might have potential to uh, rise above the rest one day. I don't know how fast it will be. But um, I think he has more to it than that stream thingy that he does. Um, and um, obviously... <laughs> Obviously, congrats to him. I'm not a, the biggest fan on the stream, but uh, clearly respect for the player. There's no doubt there's something there. Maybe he can commit more time to the game, and I know he's been dedicating a lot of time, and we might be seeing more of him on the tournament scene soon, because for now, he's just starting to hit the scene and showing us, showing us some play. And still, he wasn't able to just... Um, take Sokka away here on this uh, specific matchup. It did uh, quite well, but Sokka took the final victory. But I'll go over the results anyway. I just want to congratulate IPL because the series is pretty awesome. I really enjoy it. All for free. I love the fact that I have free VODs, meaning that I can just go there when I feel like it and take a look. And uh, doesn't mean doesn't force me to just sit down and have to watch the stream live, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Though they do make a restream for Europe and all of that. Yeah. Uh, things that. Things that I would like to criticize, but I know they're already aware of that because they made a post on TL, a thread on TL asking for things that people disliked. That big banner on the top with the names, it's too big. Sometimes it goes over the production, the, the, the little squares on the production. You just stop seeing the ones on the far right because, well, that thing is on top of it. But that's basically it. I mean, they just need to reduce it a little bit and I can watch the games just fine. It's just me being picky. I love the... Um, I love this season. I love the fact they're just trying to just broaden their horizons and bringing the Europeans into the scene. Maybe on uh, IPL3 we're going to see some Koreans. Who knows? Yeah, but, that uh, for, would be uh, awesome. Yeah, but it's pretty interesting to watch. They have some uh, cool players on both sides of the Atlantic, both from North America and Europe. Yeah. And uh, all the matches I've been watching, they've been pretty awesome. I mean, uh, let me be honest with you. Um, Idra won that series fair and square, but it was just... I don't know, I was just with my mouth open, jaw dropped, when I saw a million mutilists getting blasted away <laughs> on the single shot. Yeah. And, and Idra realized that. Idra just realized, oh, I missed there. I just, pff, he just left the game. But he took the win there. Congrats to him. was good. Mm -hmm. And um, was uh, pretty just, intense. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Thing about that, uh, Hydra yeah, yeah, quick. go, go. Uh, season 2 of IPL, I just, uh, I, I could not miss it because I missed quite a bit of season 1 when I was busy uh, running around or doing stuff. So I finally got to uh, talk myself into buying the Justin.tv app for the iPhone. So now I can watch the uh, the games anywhere when they're being streamed. And I was uh, having brunch or breakfast or whatever at a diner. And um, the <laughs> EU rebroadcast was on after the uh, after day one where they had Idra versus, uh, um, Idra versus Druby. And man, I remember seeing the uh, mutilus just get smoked, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. "Oh man!" I, I think I knocked over a glass of uh, water too, or something. Luckily, I had drank. PG lifestyle, ice. man. Yeah, I knocked it over. Cause, oh man, it was crazy. But uh, yeah, now I'm not going to be missing uh, anything because now I can just you know stream from my cell phone anywhere, anytime. But uh, the IPL season two has just captivated me. But um, I I'm really looking forward to just see how all the players play because so far it has just been a treat and. Sebastian said he wants his in a nice bow that he can unwrap. Uh, not me. I want uh, Krispy Kreme donuts glazed in a box where I can just grab them and shove them down my throat because I, I can't get enough of this, and I don't want to sit there and unru unwrap this. I just want to scarf this I, I think down. we're talking about the same thing with <laughs> I, different metaphors. I know. I'm just uh, teasing you. But uh, let's, you guys want to go over the results here before we uh You go guys go for it. Come on. Here. Sebastian, I'll let you go over the results here first. You take the first few slides. Yeah, just right, um, just so. just mention who passed and uh, no need for the specifics because I well I don't have the specifics there. Yeah, just just, go, just say who passed it. and uh, yeah, and we have the vod here with uh, plenty of detail for anybody who's gonna watch. Oh it. yeah, oh yeah. But uh, go ahead, Sebastian. All right, uh, going through the 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 winners of the IPL brackets. Uh, we, uh, as we've seen here previously on the wards, we saw Idra face Druby, and even though he missed my crowd, uh, at least two gaggles of mutalisks uh, and got completely obliterated and did not GG, uh, he won that uh, series. Uh, but yeah. I recommend you guys watch it. Uh, it was casted by Pain User and Cat's Pajamas, and uh, uh, pleasantly surprised by both of them. I haven't really um, gotten into each of those uh, casters, but I'm a fan now. Uh, very good, 
Uh, indeed. So uh, uh, there we had Minigun versus Die Star. I must admit, I, I did not catch this, uh, but I am uh, a fan of Die Star. I've had him featured on the GG Vision Stock of Two Coliseum. And uh, sadly, however, uh, my uh, favorite did not win that. Uh, however, moving on to Moonon and Fury. Moonon was a dream hack, and uh, even though I didn't get the chance to speak to him, I saw him play uh, very strong. And for me, quite a, a bit of a new name. I know he's been making uh, himself all the more famous lately, but uh, he uh, managed to take down Fury, who's also very well known. So that's a very climactic series. Vide versus Tarson. Tarson uh, was also a dream hack and uh, I shook his hand. Uh, he was a cool dude, uh, enormous. Uh, yet, uh, Vibe was the better player and took him out. And by the way, I just love the way that how uh, the IPL, again, presents the gloss over these brackets. Looks very steampunky. Yeah, uh, yeah. Axla versus Thorsane. My man, Thorsane. Uh, My man. Son <laughs> Our man, then. Uh, such a good Terran player. Uh, I actually spoke to one of the TL admins at DreamHack, Bumblebee, and uh, asked him plainly, why is Thorsey not on Team Liquid? Uh, considering <laughs> how well he did in the uh, Team Liquid Star League. And he mm -hmm. said, uh, very honestly, uh, he declined the offer. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Thorsein got the opportunity to play for Liquid, but uh, uh, chose to go somewhere else. Interestingly, uh, he also defeated Axlav, as a famous uh, fearsome player. Destiny versus Sokka, uh, we uh, saw that featured in the VODs, and Hydra spoke of it. Sokka, uh, also a dream hack, very fearsome Protoss, one of the very best in Europe, no yeah, doubt. Yeah. And uh, Mana and da Dark Force, uh, I did catch this one actually, because I'm a fan of Dark Force, and of course I um, saw Mana uh, fight in. Uh, Dreamhack win at Dreamhack Winter 2010, so that was a good matchup. I thought uh, Dark Force kind of threw that away. It was epic game, especially the one on Shakura, casted by uh, uh, HD and Pain user together. Um, very epic indeed, and uh, a very unorthodox turnout. Uh, I, I recommend it dearly, but it's safe to say that uh, Mana was the stronger player, yet Dark Force had the chance to win, uh, but threw it away. Uh, DDE versus Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix um, took the win. Uh, I'm, happy, I'm a fan of Phoenix, and um, especially considering, uh, again, the globalization of esports. Uh, the more pros from all over the world who can get together, uh, the better for the sport. Uh, moving on, Kivikaki versus Strelok. I'm good. Uh, I'm happy to say that Strelok won, uh, even though Kivikaki is a funny Canadian. Uh, Nurcio versus Cloud. Uh, Cloud being uh, an old Brood War Terran, uh, and I remember him on an old TL attack um, uh, saying that um, his main interest in life is Starcraft and pornography. Apparently, that works well. <laughs> Uh, Goody versus State. I have no idea who State is, but it doesn't matter anymore because Goody won. And Merce, my countryman, who I actually um, drank beer with after uh, Dreamhack Summer was concluded, uh, was however defeated by Night End, who's also a good player. But uh, I was indeed cheering for Merce, so that's a bit sad. And uh, that would be it. We have a Terrific matchups lining themselves up, though. Uh, several of these. Uh, greatly looking forward to uh, watching the IPL more. It's turning into my favorite pastime. Let me just. Um, oh my God! Look, look at um, the viewer. KK is just saying that <laughs> he can't get the lap dance out of my head. Yeah, I, every time I hear Dark Force, <laughs> I go for the same. Not sure why, but you can blame you can blame Takesen for that. It was the one that arranged all of that. What I wanted to compliment is today's results um, because I I was just checking them here on TL while I was linking some white raw uh, Photoshop pictures to the Iceman. Oh, but, dude, um, I'm having the hardest time keeping my <laughs>, laughs muffled here. You're you're killing me, man. But yeah, today's results for the IPL. Well, they were played yesterday. It's today for me here in Europe. Never mind. But um, uh, unfortunately for me, uh, you had the Select versus Liquid Rat, with Select winning 2-0. I'm a big fan of Rat, what can I say? I think the guy just sometimes overcommits on his drone production, and <laughs> when he notices, he's just completely trampled and crushed. He didn't make any defense, but okay. <laughs> then you had Lalush facing against Ranged, with Lalush winning 2-0. Then you had um, Stake from Team Qu um, Complexity against Bratok, and Bratok winning 2-1. And then you have White Ra facing against Six Jack Coca, Six Jacks Coca, 
and the white row winning 2-0, so special tactics Yay. there once again. Yay. So that was linked, tactics as usual. I was linking a bunch of uh, um, photoshopped images from white row. Uh, maybe uh, I'll put them maybe on the uh, after will. we cover the IPL, so we can close yeah. out on a bit of a. Lose. Maybe it'll show some later on after we cover the IPL. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah I, I don't have I don't have much else to say besides to whoever is listening and viewing this. If you're missing the IPL, you're not missing anything. Just go. Get on, I don't know, You're on Google type. You mean? Le no, listen. You go on you Google and type. You don't want to miss this. This is awesome. You but can it's go easily Google. accessible. Yeah. Oh, listen, I, you can I get go it. Yeah. You're not missing anything, you but you're missing everything. Yeah. You you can go on uh, on Google and type Justin TV IGN Pro League. It goes straight there. Go on the videos on more videos. Check all the matches are there for free in HD. Just enjoy. So I mean, there's no reason for you to miss an event of this caliber with this quality and free. There's there's no click and then you need a pass. It's just click and watch it. So I mean, you need to help to well, not help, but you need to enjoy and uh, just promote this kind of uh, solutions and uh, this kind of um, ideas for the tournaments because um, I do understand that all the community needs money and that the organizations need money to make more money, but um, there's limits. Especially when you see some events where uh, they just don't provide the best and they still charge you for the ticket. I don't know. Um, I think they need to step up their game. But uh, still, just go for it, enjoy it. I think it's the best thing to do. And uh, if you have a break, just go and watch Dark Force having a lap dance. All good. <laughs> it's the best. If I may uh, add something to that, uh, Iceman and Hydra. Uh, a bit of a sober point perhaps to the money-making aspect that you mentioned, the fact that most tournaments out there, NASL, GSL, even though those organizations have uh -huh. vastly different budgets, they, they charge you for watching, which is something I'm fine with uh, because yeah, yeah. I think the price is, is fair and I have often purchased uh, these services to watch a month or more of games for what is comparatively very little money. Uh, I know many people have a principle against it, I don't. However, I must say the best way of getting money out of online content is not by charging for it, it is by making it extremely accessible and then showcasing your own product. Uh, IGN, uh, they have a marketing strategy and they want more eyes on their content in order to spread uh, the products or services or whatever is their strategy. And if you uh, force people to pay, I mean GOMTV has tons of sponsors that you get overexposed to even though you pay for their services. Uh, but if you make it extremely accessible and very good, people, all the more people will watch it and they will be so happy that it's free. And mm -hmm. whatever brand we get exposed to while watching IPL, uh, they're succeeding. It's part of their strategy to uh, get as many people as possible watching and then they make money of it. It, it can be done and that's the way it should be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I completely agree. I mean, uh, IGN is just doing all the right moves. Free HD and uh, they're heavily involved with including the community. I mean, I know we have uh, lots of amazing YouTube shoutcasters. Ask Joshi, HD Starcraft, Pain User, Cat's Pajamas. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, they're doing this the right way. They're getting people involved and making people interested because of the quality of their product. And uh, I mean, I, they sold it. Uh, they sold it to me on season one and season two. I'm just grasping for more. Um, <laughs> would it be a fair assumption to say that uh, you know we make DreamHack the uh, pinnacle on this show of live tournament events uh, in terms of production? Would it be safe to say that the IPL right now is the uh, pinnacle of uh, online events mm, possible uh, that people would, would want to so. emulate yeah uh, I mean I um, think that is a fair assumption yeah uh, and for me um, keep in mind that for me personally still the, the, the most enjoyable um, event was DreamHack the Invitational that the smaller one you know mm -hmm. yeah, the I one agree. that the one that had like smaller, uh, uh, smaller number of players, and it was like on a small amphitheater with a lot of interviews and uh, the guy too good being a host. That was the finest for me till this moment. But um, yeah, you might say that because IPL provides a lot of good content, a lot of exquisite content for free. Uh, I mean, it's not for free. There's always advertised advertisement behind it. There's a big company behind it. There's money invested on it. But uh, you know what I mean? They're attracting the the viewers and uh, try to solidify. Their their presence on the community, try to get more and more people um, just glued to the monitor or to the TV to just sit down and enjoy IPL and it will get to a point where everyone will love it. Um, I'm not sure 
what about TSL? I mean, TSL was pretty big and they had a really good quality as well. So, um, yeah. and I do know, I do know that TSL for now is still probably the main reference, but IPL is trying to uh, take that position on the top of the hill, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think they're doing a pretty good job from all the online tournaments. They're probably the one that is doing the best, the best job. Mm -hmm. uh, TSL definitely, yeah. Uh, you have a you have a case to make there. Uh, I think it's really close between IPL and. Uh, uh, TSL, of course, I believe IPL has probably more of uh, more of a force behind it of uh, staffed people, you could say, in uh, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in office spaces working on it. Whereas TSL yeah, yeah, yeah. is more coming out of the love of the community, which uh, you could say is an even greater feat for them to produce such a great uh, quality event. True. So, yeah, I mean, both are doing really good, and I would say uh, the reason I brought that up is because there's probably uh, there is many. Um, Online events. Uh, I'm gonna name a name. NASL that might want to take uh, take some <laughs> lessons from this. Yeah. Maybe. Pardon. Now, uh, for me, yes. let me just add. I did. I really like the finals, the NASL finals. But oh, everyone yeah. knows what happened on day one, and that's the kind of things that need to be ironed out. You know, it needs to be impeccable all the way, especially especially when you tell people that they want to buy. They need to buy tickets to watch the maximum quality. I mean. If I'm buying a, a ticket, I want to see the best quality possible, basically. And um, that's something that the, the IPL has been providing to us 24-7, and I'm still waiting for them to demand any kind of ticket from me, so I'm happy. That's all. Yeah. But uh, that's all the topics that we have for this week. Um, nice and short this week and concise with some uh, great results and uh, some fun stuff to talk about, but... You guys want to close it off with a bit of a laugh? Uh, Hydra was spamming me while uh, Sebastian Please was talking, do. and I was trying to trying to give him the respect by not laughing. But now I'm gonna to have to let loose when I no, uh, no, show listen. these images. <laughs> Listen, just add the images because there's still a couple of things for me to comment on. Um, maybe I should send you the link. You might be able to show some of it on the stream. I'm not sure if it's possible or not. For uh, example, yeah. the, up and, the up and down matches, uh, the groups for the up and down matches on uh, the GSL are done because the finals from Code A were done today. The link that I just sent you, it's for uh, the, the groups. The, co the finals are here as well. Let me send you the finals. And uh, we had them. Um, on code A, I'm going to be going fairly quick about this because... Um, just, yeah, just just read the groups because I, I, it's going to yeah. be a bit of work to get the images in here. Yeah, all good. Um, you had three groups, group A, B, and C. On group A, you're going to have Marine King, Fruit Dealer, Ryang, Dream, and Happy. So, at least, um, I would say, three solid players there. Marine King and Ryang and, well, Fruit Dealer, a bit shaky, but he's still a name that I always take under consideration, so I'm going to get it there. Let's see if we can rise from the ashes, because at the moment he's under pressure. Maybe you're going to see him just crashing and burning into Code A. Then on Group B, you're going to have Any Pro Prime, SC4U, Tassadar, ASD, and Noblesse. Interesting group, but not the best. I think that uh, SC4U might be able to... Um, dominate this group, though I'm curious about Tassadar. He did quite well on Code A, as I was uh, mentioning, and uh, because he just faced on the finals against Xenex Puzzle, though he didn't took the win, but I'll go over it soon. And then you had Group C with Alive for you, OGS Inca, Keen, Linok for you, and Ban Ban Su. And um, what I would like to say from Group C is I'm a big Linok fan, I would like to see him rising to Code S. But a life for you, Inca, they're nasty. They're good players. So this group might be interesting as well. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay tuned to check this uh, up and down matches. I think they're going to be pretty interesting. And I want to follow and root for Linok, to be honest. I think he's a young kid and deserves more than, he, than what he's been getting. And on, the, on this Code Day season, he's been fighting his way. He got to the semifinals, doing pretty well. And hopefully you're going to see him again on Code S. I think it was a well-deserved prize. Uh, now just a small uh, uh, skipping and hopping into Code the finals today. It was a long PvP, best out of seven, between Tassadar and Xenex Puzzle, with Puzzle winning 4-2, and well, Puzzle got uh, uh, promoted to Code S, congrats to him, with Tassadar fighting on the up and down matches. I still only watched game one. Uh, I'm not the most um, 
critical negative uh, person or a fan over PvP. I just sit down and enjoy it. Uh, there's some really short games and they're not the best. But um, we actually, there was a pretty back and forth battles here. Plenty of microing, as you might imagine, on PvP. And Tassadar took the first two games and things were just starting to go pear-shaped for puzzle. I was thinking, oh my god, this is going to be a 4-0. It's getting a tradition on the finals from GSL. But no, then puzzle just turned the table around and took four games in a row from Tassadar and won 4-2. So congrats to him and congrats for the pr promotion to Codes. These are two things I would like to comment on. Uh, oh, there's still no, no pictures on the stream. I want to take a look at the pictures. I wasn't paying attention. No, I'm um, saving them for after you're done. <laughs> okay. Um, then the other things that I would like to make just some brief comments on is, first of all, I don't know if you guys uh, noticed this, but I'm pretty sure most people that go and read Team Liquid, it's been there on the main page for ages. Uh, SK Gaming, a fairly big uh, um, organization here in Europe that has been involved on World of Warcraft and uh, other games, Counter-Strike and so on. Apparently they want to try to grab a piece of the pie, a piece of the StarCraft II pie, and decided to uh, make a deal with OGS. So now every time OGS MC and OGS NADA come to play on foreign tournaments, they're going to be represented by SK Gaming. They're yeah. going to be SK Gaming players, which is an interesting deal. I mean, they're still OGS players. I'm pretty sure they're going to have some kind of jackets with SK Gaming and OGS and so on. So it's basically a sponsorship for them. And uh, at the same time, you just see SK Gaming jumping the wagon, you know, just trying to get a peek at StarCraft 2. Maybe they're starting to notice that there's a lot going on and they're missing on it. We'll see if they're going to go further ahead. Maybe we're going to see a, a StarCraft 2 team popping from SK Gaming. They were a fairly big organization. Not sure how they are now at the moment. I haven't been following them. But um, it's interesting to see. And the uh, last, um, last news uh, is just the fact that Mondragon, a big uh, European legend from Brood War, he just left his uh, team, Meet Your Maker. So basically he doesn't have a team at the moment. What do you guys think about Liquid Mondragon? Would, be, would it be nice? Uh, I'm thinking more of GG rated Mondragon. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, it would be cool. <laughs> Both but would be nice. Cool. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Mondragon, uh, super ferocious player. Um, we didn't hear too much for him from him other than uh, his activities in TSL three, um, which he proved to be a still dominant force in the uh, StarCraft scene. Um, mm -hmm. Joining Team Liquid, I think that would be very interesting, and uh, hopefully he would get. Uh, an extreme uh, amount of exposure compared to uh, what he, you know, was getting showcased. We saw not too much uh, out of him under MYM. I mean, not that he wasn't practicing or doing stuff. It's just that we didn't see or hear too much of him. And I know uh, maybe under Team Liquid regime, he might get a uh, little bit more of the spotlight. So I mean, for that, I'm all for that. But uh, anything yep. that brings Mondragon to the forefront of the news, I'm happy for because he's a wonderful Zerg player, and I love watching him play. Yeah. Sebastian. In, indeed. I mean, I featured Mondragon on the G Division Stock of Two Coliseum and uh, using the few replays he has released. And I've been talking to him on Team Liquid, begging him to come on as a co caster. And he has said, uh, definitely, maybe. And uh, <laughs> he, he is um, a legend and has the strategic capacity to be truly, truly good. And uh, like few other, he, he would make a strong addition if he chose to go pro. And I think MYM being stuck in their ways or whatever perhaps will, doesn't offer him uh, that anymore. Uh, let's hope for a bright uh, future with Mondragon in the middle. Excellent. Uh, is it safe to say we can move on to the uh, funny pictures now? Or I don't yeah. want to jump it's the game twice. Say. All yeah. right, finally. Uh, I'm going to start with yeah, this just one a here couple first. I selected. <laughs> Here's a picture of. Uh, White Just Raw and OJ Raw. Leno here photoshopped and it says, uh, he's no problem, Jay. Make mass unit, then push. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have uh, some pretty, pretty cool pictures. It's from um, a thread on Tim Liquid that says, uh, White Ross face is everywhere or something like that. I think it's the name of the thread. And I just watched this one and was laughing hard this afternoon. So I said, nah, I'm going to link it to them. They're going to have a laugh as well. So, well, at least the viewers can enjoy it as well. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I White Ross has been known to say uh, special tactics, just use special tactics. And uh, mm -hmm. now I have a picture here of uh, Shea Guevara, but uh, it's featuring White Ross's face, and it says, White Ross's face, and it says, Tacticas Especiales. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I was having it's a hard a, time a, being quiet when you sent that to me. 
<laughs> is that in wallpaper size, Iceman? Um, uh, let me see. I don't know, good question. I don't think it is, to be honest. But there here. should be one, or at least something that you could print on a t-shirt would be pretty cool. Oh, Chera or a white yeah. Guevara, something like that. Yeah. Someone needs to get that in, um, in a wallpaper size or a, on t-shirts at least, because uh, if that was on a t-shirt, I would, I would definitely buy that, because you know, you see people wearing those uh, Che Guevara shirts everywhere, and uh, mm. oh wow, yeah, it's in, it's in, um, Wallpaper size, all right. It's uh, fourteen seventeen by thirteen eighty five. So, oh, cool. That's uh, pretty big. So, yeah. If somebody out there wants to put that on a T-shirt, or uh, better yet, don't let me do it and make some uh, capital on that, um, make some profit there. But uh, yeah, funny nonetheless. So, uh, White Raw, you're always in our hearts. <laughs> Special tactics. <laughs> <laughs> Special barbecue tactics. What else? Come on, show the other ones. Uh, these are the only two I got. Well, I got at least um, two more. Two more? No, you only sent me three total, I think, right? Nah, check the list. I sent like a couple more just now. Oh. If you go a bit... Uh, even Ibra, type, oh. No, this is definitely not. I don't know how you can blaspheme White Raw's <laughs> greatness with Bieber. Hydra, <laughs> you're getting the band stick. Come on. I just, I just pick the image and just show it to people. That's all. I can't do it. <laughs> Uh, in either case, it's been a thrill to be back at Generated with you guys, and uh, I'd like yeah. to take the opportunity to speak to uh, uh, the viewers about uh, things that uh, should interest them all. Um, currently, I've, I haven't been working as hard at Sarkov as I would have liked, only 30 hours a week or so, and uh, I've been producing some content uh, called the Alienware Challenge, which uh, is based on exclusive replays uh, given yeah. directly to GGVision by um, uh, Alienware, the company who makes the gaming computers, and uh, uh, they had a tournament that took place at DreamHack, uh, where the first prize was an Alienware Aurora, and hi, Idra and I tried to cast it, we did so, and I recorded it yeah. without sound, uh, but now I have indeed re-recorded it and uploaded it on my channel, so you find it there, sorry there for the startup noise, uh, you find it there on the, um, the ggvision.tv site, however, there's more stuff coming. And that should definitely interest viewers of GG Rated because um, I have always uh, wanting to do exclusive stuff, uh, to, to trying to add something new. And uh, maybe that's uh, my ego speaking, but that, that's always been what I wanted to do with StarCraft, to trying to add so something that isn't already there. And when it comes to casting, most oh things have been done. Something's happening over in uh, the USA, but never mind. Um, <laughs> Uh, I have I had the pleasure of meeting uh, the Team Liquid staff, Nasgul, and many admins as well as the pro gamers at uh, DreamHack, and I took that opportunity to put my salesman's hat on and sell them an idea, and I actually managed to do that quite well. Uh, GG Vision will. Uh, Next week, if not this week, uh, the first game is uh, being rendered right now, be featuring exclusive replays from Liquid players only. And these uh, replays have not been seen or casted anywhere else, and they are chosen entirely because of how epic they are. The GG Vision Coliseum will be known as the GG Vision Liquid Coliseum. It will feature okay. Liquid Pro Gamers and... Uh, it will showcase material. Uh, well, it's it's nothing going to. It's never going to be anything less than awesome. It's based on awesomeness, not on chronological order or anything uh, like it. But it will enable uh, viewers to see these liquid players outside of the big tournaments and outside their streams. It will be the very best mm -hmm. of cool. what's out there. Awesome. And, that sounds uh, cool. That's happening. So, uh, viewers of GG Rated will be getting back to you with more info on that. Awesome. Uh, since you're talking with all the TL admins, any chance of getting us uh, on the featured list there? <laughs> <laughs> we have been going at this for quite some time now, and uh, there well, there are TL admins we and TL admins, yet, so. and I don't know uh, which admin you need to perform certain unmentionable acts upon in order to get on <laughs> the featured stream lists. Uh, I, I went for gold and got the replays, but uh, whoever in is in charge of the stream, uh, I'll, I'll get working on it. Awesome. I'll um, I'm probably going to try to contact because I don't know if you guys noticed this, but um, 
Like a couple of weeks ago, I decided that I should upload on my channel some streams with the first-person view from the gamers for people to take a look at how things work. I mean, I know that this is available every day on live streams, but sometimes people miss the big names. So I was able to contact some gamers, and be in between them, I wanted to stream OGS The Wind. I wanted to stream him playing on the Korean ladder. So I asked Liquid Huck, and he was kind enough to reply to me, saying that uh, he was even a bit surprised because most people just take and don't even ask. And I ended up talking with Liquid Nazgul, so maybe I'm able to reach him again, who knows? Awesome. Nazgul is a cool dude. Yeah, yeah, it is a very cool dude. He was quite nice. I uh, just um, was surprised as Huck that uh, I actually took my time to ask if I could uh, upload some of the live streaming because basically he was saying that most of the people just go grab it, take it, and don't say anything. So uh, based on that, maybe I'm able to reach him once more, but uh, we'll see. They have their policies. We've been respecting their policies for 22 episodes now. Maybe one day they'll concede us. Um, maybe we just need to show them that uh, we've been working for all of these weeks and that we're still ready to roar, ready to roar, like the other guys from GSL say. And um, maybe we'd like a bit more of visibility. But uh, yeah, let's see if I can reach them once more. Would be nice. Yes, your gentleman tactics will get you very far in life, Hydra. <laughs> oh, I actually, I actually spoke with Whitera. He, 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 he oh, he replied yet. to you. Yeah, he did. He said, yeah, good idea. Go ahead. And I uh, just uploaded some of his streaming. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, yeah well, special uh, tactics all the way. He's awesome. special tactics on the line because we, uh, we want the special <laughs> tactics on air here. But, we uh, do. Cool. Since we're uh, touting big names here, um, talked with Artosis a bit, and uh, he, we talked on Skype a bit, and he was, he's pretty busy, so I uh, wasn't able to carry on too much of a conversation. But... Uh, did give me his email, and I'm going to be getting in touch with him and hopefully setting up a time where we can get him on the show here and uh, we can get insider information and insight into the life of Korea and uh, more specifically GSL and how uh, the life of a caster is over there. So I'm, I'm really interested to uh, see if we can get Artosis on the show here soon enough. Okay, okay, cool. Things are happening. Yep. Yep. But uh, guys, let's let's do the final shoutouts and wrap this up here because I think my house is going to get blown away. I don't know if you heard the thunder, <laughs> but uh, I, I was did. sitting here. We did. And I and I thought I heard rumbling in the distance. I was like, oh, it's passed by now. And then the house shook, and I jumped out of my seat <laughs> a bit. So uh, I'm thankful that the internet didn't go down and the stream didn't die. You know, with our our previous uh, history of you know streams going down on us and mm -hmm. dying and whatnot. But uh, yeah, any That's last words, guys? That. Uh, well, I'm just happy to be back at GG Rated. It's the place to be. It makes uh, the week so much sweeter. And uh, even though next week I will have to print newspapers again, that's the last week I have to do that. And after that, Hooray. it's going to be an epic late summer slash autumn of StarCraft 2. In the meantime, hey, guys, hey. do check out ggvision.tv where there is exclusive stuff from the Alienware Challenge with the glossy overlays just the way I like it and you too. So check that out. Pink pretty bows. Check it out. Oh yeah. Awesome. Hydra, any last words? No. Check the channel whenever you feel like it. Um, I'm gonna keep gonna keep working on the vods. Gonna keep providing uh, stuff that has been covered for any of the major channels, so you guys can watch some different matchups and uh, sit down and watch IC Cup today, tomorrow, and the day next of tomorrow. You're gonna have some epic Korean pro gaming there if you enjoy the Korean scene. And awesome. GG. Awesome. All right, and uh, my shout-outs are just, guys, keep tuning in, keep spreading the word, download the podcast, check out the VODs on uh, the appropriate channels, uh, justin.tv slash ggrated or Hydra's channel after he uh, re-uploads it to YouTube. That's uh, youtube.com slash xhydrax. Add yep. us on Twitter, twitter.com slash ggrated. And uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Looking forward to uh, some more epic series coming up here. Uh, now that Sebastian has said that uh, one week of work left, so it's going to be it's going to be good to have him back at the uh, tail end of summer. So, uh, guys, keep tuning in and uh, GG and special tactics. <laughs> special <laughs> tactics. Special tacticas. All right, guys, have fun. See you later. Hydra, no button this week? No, nah, I don't have the button here. I'm looking for it. Uh -oh. We can't, <laughs> I don't, we can't I don't. shut the show down until you have the button. Wait, wait, I found it. Wait, 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 wait. Hit wait, that there button. It is. Special tactics. GG. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. See, See you, later. you guys.